Welcome to Highline Excel class number 13. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, this workbook here. If you're in the class, uh, go ahead and go to our week two website. Hey, we got to talk about text functions, functions like trim, proper, find, search, substitute, and some others. And these are very useful functions because a lot of times our data is messed up, like too many leading spaces or spaces that uh, are at the end that can wreck our data analysis. And also we need sometimes to reorganize. So if we have a first and last name, maybe we need to switch them around. So there's lots of text functions. We're going to look at a few of them here. The first one is trim. Trim is a great function. You just give it your name, and it will give you a haircut. It's No, no, not a haircut. Trim really gets rid of all spaces except for single spaces between word, words. This is a very important function because if you do look up or a true-false formula or something like that, and you have extra spaces, uh, you might not get what you want. So let's see how to use trim equals trim. And you simply uh, click on it, and it gets rid of all the single spaces, um, all of the spaces except for single spaces between words. right? So now we very properly, if I double click and send this down, you can see uh, we don't have any leading spaces. Now, if you did this, and now you want to use this raw data, you can see the function up here. You don't want to keep that function. You actually want to copy it, Control-C, and then go up to the uh, home ribbon and paste special. In the earlier versions, it's under edit, paste specials. And uh, let me control Z. Boop. Uh, in earlier versions, um, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to go all the way down here to uh, a paste special right here. So that's in the edit menu in earlier versions. And then this has all the options. And then you click on values. Let me control Z here. There's a fast way to do it with your mouse. Um, if you point to the edge of your selected range and right click, right click and drag, you can see how there's this gray range. I'm just dragging it over to the right, and now I'm going to drag it back. The, the act of right clicking and dragging the edge will get this special pop up. Um, drop down menu to appear and it says copy here as values only and then you can copy here as values only. Now you have uh, good names here. Another uh, problem is uh, pr uh, we have all capital letters which we don't have here we were supposed to have but I uh, messed up the uh, let me uh, you, you didn't see that. I just uh, typed them all out in, in cap letters there for you. Those, that's what we're supposed to have. Uh, so we did our trim, and proper gets rid of all either all the upper or all lower cases and only capitalizes the very first letter in each word. So I'm going to go equals proper. And I'm going to select this one here, because this one's got a bunch of spaces. Oh, look at that. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. And that happens a lot. You get a dump from a database, and it's all capital, and that's not what you want. So the proper function is just a great uh, solution to that. And again, same thing. If you highlight all of these values, you then can uh, right, cl right click the edge, pull it to the um, left or right, pull it back. The menu pops up. You say copy here as values only. Now another function is find, which is case sensitive, and search, which is not case sensitive. And it can find a space. So watch this. I'm going to do, um, so find or search uh, finds the space in a text string and tells you what position it, it is in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we ask find to find a space, it'll, it'll return seven equals find. And the find text is we want a, um, our single space. So I'm going to double quote, space, double quote, comma. So that's the text it's trying to find within this text. Um, and we don't. We could put a start number, but we're not going to here. Close parentheses, control enter. So it gives us a 7. I'm going to double click and send this down. That's very important. Um, I guess they're, they're all 7. Uh, let's. Ch uh, let's change this right here. Boop, 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 just to show you that. Oh, yeah, there it is. So that, that's a lot. Um, and then this one, we'll change it a few here. 
So there it says 10, here it says 11, the rest are 7. That's very important because some of the tricks we're going to do now when we start rearranging names, like maybe we want only the first name. So we have a column that has both names, and we need to extract it with a formula. So now I'm going to come over here, and I want to show you how to use the substitute function. And what the substitute function is going to allow us to do is we got this data dump from some database, and it had a space there after the last name. And our system needs a comma. So we can use the substitute and say, hey, substitute function, find all the uh, spaces after the last name and put a comma there. So equals substitute. And it wants the text. And that's going to be that right there. Comma, what's the old text that we want to find and do a substitute for? Well, it's in, um, it's a space. So double quote, space, double quote. And now a comma, to jump to the next argument, the new text is going to be our comma and space. So in double quotes, comma, space, double quotes. Finally, uh, the instance number. Notice that um, some people have middle initials. So if we left instance number off, it would put a comma there and there. But we just want a comma on the first instance of a space. So I'm going to put 1 close parentheses. Control enter and then double click and send it down. That is so cool. It did exactly what we want. Now let me show you something that's kind of confusing here. I'm going to hit F2. See how we have all the commas which uh, separate arguments and then there's some commas inside of quotes. That gets confusing. So an alternative to typing this into uh, a cell is to just go up to the substitute functions argument dialog box and type it up here. Then it's not as confusing. You have double quote, space, double quote, and then there, quote, double quote, comma, space, double quote. And you're not confused by all of the uh, commas that represent uh, different arguments. Click OK. OK, next we want to see if we can. So here the problem was we needed a comma for our system. But now we need first name only in a column, and then uh, how do we do that? Because the, the, all the data is in one cell, the last name and the first name. Well, let's, we, we always, when you're analyzing data, you've got to find a pattern. And for us here, the pattern is uh, the first name always starts right after a space and a comma. So if we could somehow uh, find that and take everything out after that comma and a space, that would work just fine. Well, we're going to actually use the replace function, which is slightly different than the substitute equals replace. The substitute, we just said, hey, find this and replace it. This one's going to be different. We have our old text. And replace wants a starting number, right? So if we put 1, it's going to start at the very first character. And then how many characters to count? Right? So that's different than substitute. Here we're going to say we want to uh, look at this, start at the first character, and we want to go all the way to that comma space. So the starting number is going to be 1. But how in the world do we count the number of characters? Because we need it to, we want to replace everything up to that space with a blank, so then it's just left with Dina. How in the world are we going to do that? Number of characters. Oh, we'll use the find. We saw that the find function can find the position. And that's exactly what we want, because we need number of characters to go from the first character. So we use find. And find text. We're going to, in uh, double quotes, a comma and a space. And then double quote. So that's the thing we're looking for, comma and within what text? within this text right here. Now, I'm going to close parentheses on this. And here's a good trick. Right now, it will find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because it finds the first comma, and that's the position. What we really want is the eighth position. And so we actually have to add 1 here. So that'll be the number of characters. It will start at 1, 1, and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 characters. It will find all of those, comma, and what's the new text we want in its place? We want a 
double quote, double quote, which is blank, which means blank. Now notice, replace, we said start at 1, go all this distance here, which is all the way to there, take all of that, and now put a blank there in the place of all that. Now I'm going to control enter and double click and send it down. And sure enough, that one works. Replace. Now, the last thing we want to do is reorganize. So here, we inserted a comma. Here, we took the first name. But now we want to reorganize it. We actually want to show this first name and then the last name. All right. What pattern can I recognize here to extract the last name? Well that comma, we could use that comma again. If we could somehow take from the left this many characters each time, this many characters, so here it would be a bunch of characters. Well, from there's a function called left that will allow us to take characters from the left. And then we can just use the find, because the left we have to say how many characters we want to take. So we can take the find, which will find this, and subtract 1, and it will give us exactly the variable length for the first part, first name. So this is just how to get the last name equals left. I'm going to say in what text? This right here, comma, and how many characters? And this is where we'll use find. Find the text, double quote, comma, just a, a comma is all we need, double quote, comma, and within what text? This one right here, close parentheses, close parentheses on the left, control enter. Ah, but we forgot our minus 1, so we'll hit F2. And so this fine right here, we actually want to subtract 1 because the, the fine found 1 too many. So minus 1, control enter. There we go. Double click and send it down. Now our goal for this column is to combine these two. So Watch this. I'm going to click here and hit F2 and actually scoop this out, just like that. Control-C, Escape, click here, F2. And I'm going to paste it. But I really want to have the uh, first name, last name, and a space in between. So I'm going to Control-V. And I'm immediately going to do use the ampersand. Now, to join things together, we use the symbol ampersand. And then double quote, space, double quote, ampersand. We had to use two ampersands because we have this part of the formulas grabbing the first name. Then we needed a little space. And then this part is grabbing the last name. Because there's three things we're joining, we have two join symbols. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, so that's a little bit about uh, text functions. And uh, there's lots of amazing uses for them. But really, the trick is always, can you find a pattern? Can you find a pattern? And also, don't forget that a lot of data may have spaces. So you can use the trim, also the proper to get your data in order, and then find, replace, substitute. Uh, I'm going to click on the sheet concatenate. And I'm going to show you how to use the join symbol and the concatenate function. Uh, we just saw over here how to do it, join three things together. But here's the basics of this. Um, and this is the reverse of what we did over here. In this situation, we have our data last and first. And we need it all in one cell. So we're just going to do a formula that joins the two equals one, two cells to my left, and then an ampersand double quote, space, double quote, ampersand, uh, one cell to my left. So we're joining three things, whatever's in that cell, a space, and whatever's in one cell to my left. Three different things, so there's two ampersands. Control Enter, and then double click and send it down. And that is the opposite of what we just did over here. Now, another uh, amazingly powerful use for the join symbol and concatenation. In the textbook, they show you the concatenation function. I always like to use the join symbol. Here's a, a data set. And we have date, sales rep, product, region, sales. And in an uh, earlier video, we saw how to do some if. But now, what in the world are you going to do when you get to this situation? Your boss says, hey, I need you to add up 
for Sioux, Product 1, and West. Whoa, there's three criteria. So we actually want to add using three criteria. Well, there's functions, and I have them listed here. There's one option. There's another option. And there's another option. Later in the class, I'll actually show you how to do those things. But those formulas can actually take a long time to calculate for large spreadsheets. So an awesome solution is to concatenate or join the criteria. So we just add a new column to our data set that joins this, this, and this. Then and every single time there's Sue product one, what was it? Sue product one west, there'll be, whoops, there'll be a unique identifier in this column. So you ready? I'm just actually going to highlight this. Equals sales rep. And I'm an ampersand, and here I'm going to, in double quotes, put a dash. We don't need to do that, but I'm doing it just because then it's easier to see the three different elements put together in one formula. And watch this. I can copy this. So I have that, a dash, and now I'm going to click there, Control V, and there. Right? So I'm joining, I have one, two, three, four join symbols joining five things. Anytime there's uh, five things, you use uh, four join symbols. And so control enter, and then double click and send it down. I'm going to double click using my fill handle. And there it is. We have a unique identifier. Now we don't need to mess around with three different columns for doing some if. We can simply uh, do it that way. But now I want to show you concatenation function. I'm going to click, uh, click up here. Concatenation, I don't even know what concatenation. I didn't know that word before Excel. I'm going to type join up here and just see if I could figure out, because that's what I want to do. I want to join different elements, see if that'll find it. I hit join. And sure enough, it did find concatenate. What a weird word, which just means to join different elements. And the way this works, similar to we saw with substitute earlier, uh, you, you don't have to type in all of the uh, 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 commas and double quotes and everything. It'll do it for you. So watch this. I'm going to click, actually collapse this, and then scroll over. I need this one, uncollapse, tab to move forward, dash, tab, and then I get the next one, tab, and then dash. And notice over here, isn't this cool? It's putting in the uh, syntax for us, so we don't have to. And it even put it in there, tab. And then I want, finally, uh, the region. So the advantage to using the concatenation function is you don't have to type in uh, all of the syntax. It'll do it. You just put the stuff in, and it'll do it. Click OK. And then there you can see the concatenate, and it put all the commas and everything in uh, for you. Double click and send it down. It gets you the exact same thing. By the way, I have randomizing things here, so it's kind of jumping around. But there it is. Now we have a column. We can simply. Uh, do our, we have three criteria here, but we can build a formula right here that will uh, concatenate. So watch this. Equals this ampersand, double quote dash, double quote ampersand. Or you can use your concatenation here if you want, whichever one you like. I'm going to click on that and then click on that. So I've built my little formula, and boom, there it is. So anytime I change this here, this criteria will change. Now, instead of using these co more complicated uh, formulas over here, we can simply uh, do a sum if. Sum if. And the range with all of the criteria is going to be here. Control Shift down arrow. So I'm highlighting it. And then F4. That just jumps the screen back in. We're not copying anywhere, so we don't need them locked. Comma, the criteria is right here. Comma, and the sum range are our sales right here. Click on that top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4. Close parentheses. Remember, as we saw in an earlier video, for sum if, you actually only need the very first cell reference in the range because all of the, the counting comes from this criteria range. You usually, do, you usually see that people put in the whole range, which is fine to do it that way. And then there it is, 64. If I hit F9, you can see it's randomizing. And these formulas as well, these are all calculating. Now, uh, this may be a little bit more difficult to set up initially. But if you do have a big uh, spreadsheet, 
it's much faster in calculating. And that is an awesome use for the join or the concatenate uh, function. All right, we'll see you next video.